This is Greg Troutwine with Offshore Engineer TV. Uh, we're here today with Chris DeWitt of the American Bureau of Shipping. And Chris, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Good to be here. So Chris, uh, just to start off, you give us your title and your area of responsibility within ABS. Sure. So my title is Senior Technology Advisor, and I primarily help uh, architect our service offerings in the cybersecurity space and uh, work with clients to figure out and discover value within their operations. Uh, cybersecurity initiatives and issues are pervasive across industry. Can you give us an update on the situation in the offshore energy market? Sure. I, th I think what's happening is uh, for, I don't know, three to five years we've been talking cybersecurity. Uh, certainly the International Association of Drilling Contractors has a committee uh, that addresses that. And uh, for us at ABS, we've been talking about it since uh, 2012. And there was a whole upfront segment where we had to educate people that it was a problem because there was a lot of uh, resistance to uh, implement any of the tools because it costs more money. And so now uh, I think we're at the stage where everybody kind of knows there's a problem out there and that there are you know, several generic solutions to go pick and choose from. So part of our role is helping narrow that down to the things that are applicable to them. And the industry's really, you know, I'd say in the last two years, uh, come around to saying, all right, we're going to look at this. They're, they understand the risks now. There's cyber insurance for some of these things. There's uh, the NIST uh, security framework, cybersecurity framework is released and updated. So we're, we're becoming mature um, in a space where, you know, we were just learning to walk um, as soon as like two or three years ago. I'm sure, I know that risk and risk mitigation is inherent in all offshore operations and particularly on the cybersecurity front. Um, so let's just assume that uh, an, an offshore installation was hacked. What are some of the potential perils that could come from that? Sure. So, so uh, here's the thing about hacking, right? The, the chances of an offshore asset being hacked are very, very low. But at the same time, if it happens, the consequences are very, very high. So um, usually things aren't hacked. There's some sort of a human activity that happens that introduces something in a system and causes variability. And as you know, in offshore, we don't like variability at all. So, um, so that's one, one thing to think about in terms of that. In terms of uh, you know, actually noticing that you've been hacked, that's somewhat of a problem right now. So if a screen flickers, you know, a mariner may not know uh, that that's, uh, that something's being, being hacked or a tool pusher just thinks, oh, if something goes wrong, I reboot, and if it comes back and works, it's fine. But, uh, you know, in the cyberspace, we understand those are introduction points for uh, possibly malicious code and that sort of thing. So we, we see that the industry is, is uh, seeking easy ways to comprehend cybersecurity. And we did a project with the Coast Guard where we landed on a, a model for looking at risk. Uh, we've talked about the functions, connections, and identities for a while now. And it, it simplified their life. And so as a cyber person, you know, uh, somebody that's advising people in this space, our, our real goal now is, is to simplify things so they can understand uh, what a problem looks like in a space that really follows a different law of physics. So it's not steel vessel, it's this ghost of software that's wrapped itself around you know, your platform or your OSV or your Modu, and it, it operates and fails in ways that, that are hard to understand. So getting back to being hacked, right? So, so what are the problems? It could be one end of the spectrum is I reboot something, some malicious code is introduced to my system and I lose uh, you know, maybe it's a uh, ransomware, so it takes over that individual system. That's kind of the easy, almost innocuous stuff. I mean, it's not easy for the uh, the DP operator that's in front of that console, right? But but it, it's kind of easily handled. Mm -hmm. At the whole other end of that, and I'll just pick on DP for a minute, is is a drive off, right? So if somebody could take command and control, which again is very difficult to do, and were to uh, create a drive off event. Um, then you have a, a well bore that's exposed without any pressure reduction, right? The BOP doesn't have time to engage. So, so, so we have to think about, you know, how do we keep that sort of thing from happening? What it really involves is uh, instead of looking at 
uh, attaching controls to the perimeter like we have done historically in the IT space, it becomes one of, of looking at that system and working your way outward from it. How do you control it? Who gets to touch it? What other systems is it connected to? So it's a very different model, and especially in offshore, you know, those the difference between an OSV and a um, an FPSO, for example, is just the number of systems. So I always like to say that you know cyber is not it's not uh, complicated or complex. It's just very very tedious. And so if we, so if you take an engineering approach, because as a recovering engineer, I like tedious things. So uh, so we go count stuff, and and that's the way we get through cyber, and that's the way we help our clients through. If you can, discuss uh, recent changes from the U.S. Coast Guard in terms of cybersecurity and offshore structures. Sure. It's, um, the U.S. Coast Guard historically has uh, created policy through something they call a NAVIC. And so back in um, uh, 05 17, so, so uh, March, May of, of 2017, they released one that incorporated cyber, but but it was a draft NAVIC. And then this last September, uh, there was some some verbiage put into MITSA regulations in kind of a complicated way through the uh, FAA reauthorization bill back in September. So this wordage basically said that uh, the government at large is going to uh, enforce or, or regulate uh, industries that are in our waterways and, and on our in our uh, intercontinental shelf through MITSA regulation, which is already uh, you know um, in place, and a lot of people already use that to guide them through uh, assessments on one side and compliance on the other, right? So the recent one is that uh, they incorporate just a few select words into this new updated NAVIC uh, 0902. So, so the idea there is that uh, now cybersecurity risk management is law for things that are floating around on the intercontinental shelf, uh, even foreign flag vessels that enter our waterways and, and berth here in the states, and certainly the inland waterways. What that means is that there's now regulation that is connected to, and policy, that are connected to cybersecurity. And we haven't had that before. So it's relatively new, and uh, a lot of folks are going to wonder, you know, we've had people come by the booth today and ask us, you know, hey, what do we do about that? And we have a program that we've set up that directly addresses that. So I think we're ahead of the game. Uh, it's nice that it became regulatory, and so people are now, they can go to their leadership and say, you know, this isn't just something I want to do or think we should do but now I have law that says I need to be doing this. Well, Chris, it's a busy time. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. This is Greg Troutwine with Offshore Engineer TV.